I'd like to look at the distinction between the two types of loops that are in the loop browser, the blue loops and the green loops. I'll just go into the drum folder here to show what I'm talking about. So I've been talking about how when you preview loops and you decide uh, that you want to use a loop, that the easy way to bring it bring it into the session and have logic create the right kind of track is just to put it underneath in this area of the range window, not necessarily on a track. And when I bring in this green loop, it creates a software instrument track with the instruments and some effects. And this is MIDI data here. If you double click on that, it opens in the piano roll editor. And we'll look at ways that you can manipulate this, but this is all the various MIDI that's being triggered to make that particular drum beat. Okay, we've looked at that. Well, let me show you what happens if you take a green Apple loop and put it on an audio track. This only works for the green loops where it will convert the MIDI into audio. And there might be times when you want to do that for editing purposes. I'll get rid of this software instrument track so we're looking at the same thing. I'm going to go to the plus sign and create a audio track. So this has the blue icon. I know it's audio. If I take that same green Apple loop and put it on this blue audio track, it's not going to look like this MIDI. Even though I'm using the same loop, it's going to convert it to audio like that. So the same drum beat now is available to me as MIDI up here and I'll just mute this to show you that this audio is the same sound. Right, we're listening to the blue loop. I'll mute the blue audio loop and we'll listen to the MIDI and it's going to be exactly the same. It's a little bit louder. So keep that in mind. That's uh, what's happening. If you grab a green loop and you put it on an audio track, it's converting the MIDI to audio. Cool feature.